dear students hello i am dr h m p singh today we are going to start a flip classroom project under malakka manipal medical college in this project you are going to listen and see number of lectures which will be delivered by myself and prof lakshmi this is a project which is a new modality of large group teaching for today we have prof lakshmi she will be delivering you with a lecture on cirrhosis of liver students today we shall have a lecture on cirrhosis of liver and the learning outcomes have been clearly laid out here you all need to be able to define cirrhosis describe the etiopathogenesis and clinical features analyze the laboratory data of this disease and apply your knowledge of therapeutics to manage a patient of cirrhosis with portal hypertension and its complications now let's come to the definition it's been defined as an entity that's associated with a spectrum of characteristic clinical manifestations and the cardinal pathologic features reflect an irreversible chronic damage of the liver parenchyma and include extensive fibrosis in association with the formation of regenerative nodules just remember two key words here causes of cirrhosis causes have been classified as drugs and toxins infectious diseases inherited and metabolic disorders in a broad heading so now we'll come to the drugs all over the world alcohol is implicated for cirrhosis and amiodron an antiarrhythmic agent and oc pills used by women all over the world also is indicated where it produces bud sherry syndrome now let's come to the infectious diseases these all produce post infectious cirrhosis and they are hepatitis b c d along with b and cytomegalovirus and epstein barr virus brucellosis schistosomiasis and toxoplasmosis and inherited disorders like alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency fanconi syndrome galactosemia gaucher's disease hemochromatosis wilson's disease and hereditary tyrosinemia and of course these are very uncommon in our setting now let's continue with further causes of cirrhosis like primary biliary cirrhosis secondary biliary cirrhosis which occurs due to your two s's you know stones and strictures we have primary sclerosing cholangitis cystic fibrosis sarcoidosis and uncommonly jejunoileo bypassal surgeries and graft versus hort disease non alcoholic steatohepatitis hepatitis or called as nash in uh, a short form is on the rise because of the obesity or the globosity all over the globe and we have cardiac cirrhosis too now coming to the pathology changes of the cirrhosis affect whole liver but not necessarily all the lobules this is a key word you should remember sometimes you question yourself or you ask me why ma'am there is still liver functioning if there is cirrhosis there is fibrosis that's because some of the lobules would be still functioning and what are the cardinal changes which i have already described a few this is going to be a progressive widespread death of the hepatocytes associated with inflammation fibrosis leading to loss of normal liver lobular architecture so the key word the pathologist always use you all know that there is loss of normal architecture of the liver loss of hepatic vasculature too happens and this is what leads to our porta systemic vascular shuntings all over and regeneration and formation of nodules rather than lobules due to proliferation of surviving hepatocytes also occurs that's in summary the regenerating nodules now pathological types micronodular cirrhosis macronodular cirrhosis and an intermediate mixed forms are the three broad headings we mainly go by the characteristic of a connective tissue septae which are regular and a regenerative nodules approximate size of the original lobules so this all will be around 1 mm in size and involvement of every lobule is seen and this is example alcoholic cirrhosis so that's how it explains why alcoholic liver disease is more serious condition because lobules are also involved and macronodular cirrhosis is like connective tissue septae vary in thickness and nodules and show marked difference in the sizes and we have an intermediate mixed forms of the both you could see there it's such a uh, large specimen of the liver displayed but absolutely not pink in its health it's got lot of nodularity in both the lobes and this is what it's a 
the slides heading says this what the price you pay it's of course it's warning the alcohol uh, consumers all over the world and the sequence of the damage in alcoholic liver disease will be fatty liver liver fibrosis they do say this is still re reversible if the patient stops drinking alcohol and then the end stage cirrhosis now the here you could see the labeling of the histopathological specimen which is uh, displayed here for you you can see both the fibrosis and the regenerating nodules let's come to the clinical features that's what this is a basket of clinical features here which make a clinician miss the cirrhosis of liver in the early stages because there's a variety of symptoms it can be variedly asymptomatic sometimes found in autopsy or surgery so that's very dangerous actually and sometimes only a minimal isolated haptomegaly could be there or portal hypertension and its complications so you all need to look out very keenly and very acutely for an illness called as liver which has lots of morbidity and mot mortality and sometimes the patient complains of generalized weakness fatigue cramps in his muscles non specific digestive symptoms or dyspeptic symptoms anorexia nausea vomiting and also upper gi discomfort gaseous abdominal distension so here you just cannot point the finger at any diagnosis as you see and there are certain clinical features which do occur because of hepatic decompensation uh, in fact it will be uh, beautiful if i diagnose my patient before decomposition which we call as compensated liver cell failure patients will have initially haptomegaly always remember and small liver later so the dictum of cirrhosis or shrunken liver is a small liver jaundice will be there ascites will be there in the patients and patients will have other manifestations which we put under circulatory changes like spider nevi palmar erythema at times there are cyanos also because of the peripheral shunts endocrine changes will be there both in male and female patients and we have loss of libido hair loss in men gynecomastia testicular atrophy sexual dysfunction and in women we have breast atrophy and alopecia irregular menses and amenorrhea and there could be sometimes hemorrhagic tendency like bruises in the skin or purpure epistaxis menorrhagia etc and there are certain key features which are going to be manifestations of portal pressure which is increased there are splenomegaly collateral vessels variceal bleeding fetal hepaticus ascites and hepatic encephalopathy and other features like white nails digital clubbing low grade fever dupuytren's contracture and pigmentation can be seen now let's come to the alcoholic cirrhosis per se we have lennox cirrhosis it's called as alcoholic cirrhosis you all know and this is due to chronic consumption of alcohol and often accompanied by alcohol induced liver injuries including alcoholic fatty liver which we call or alcoholic hepatitis these two other acute manifestations of alcoholic liver damage then we have pathologically classically micronodular cirrhosis and it can affect the left lobe of the liver too and it will progress to macronodular and it's most common type of liver disease in these geographical countries like north america western europe and south america now the as i've already mentioned to you the problem is it's a clinically vague symptoms or clinically acquiescent disease 10 to 40% 40% is a big number are discovered during laparotomy or autopsy as mentioned there and its incidence in onset usually after 10 years or more of excess alcohol use progressively slowly increases to overt signs in a uh, few weeks to few months but almost years always and patient will have malnutrition anorexia weight loss which is significant and reduction of the skeletal mass will be seen as opposed to the abdomen which will be distended due to ascites he will have hepatocellular dysfunction and portal hypertension which is nothing but progressive uh, presence of jaundice in the patient bleeding from viruses ascites and hepatic encephalopathy as i said early stages patient may have a clinically palpable liver and later on it's going to be shrunken and patient will manifest with jaundice palmar erythema dupuytren's contracture spiders parotid and lacrimal gland enlargement clubbing of fingers spleen